If you have ever been to a climbing gym before or looked in a climbing guidebook, you may have noticed a strange combination of numbers and letters that look something like this, or maybe like this. These numbers are part of the Yosemite Decimal System, a system of numbers and letters that tell us how difficult to climb is. So how do you read them? We're going to cover this and why we have such a complex combination of numbers and letters to convey a climb's difficulty in this installment of How to Climb Pandemic Edition. Although these numbers, referred to as ratings, may look intimidating, interpreting the Yosemite Decimal System is fairly straightforward. We start with the number five and follow it with a decimal number. The higher that following decimal number is, the harder the climb is. This system currently starts at 5.0 and continues to 5.15. So a 5.0 represents the easiest climb in the world, while 5.15 represents the hardest. And then all climbs in between these extremes are assigned a decimal number based on their relative difficulty to each other. So a 5.1 is slightly harder than a 5.0, a 5.2 is slightly harder than a 5.1, and so on. And you'll also notice the letters A, B, C, or D placed behind the decimal number starting at 5.10. This gives further fine tuning for the difficulty rating. A 5.10D is harder than a 5.10C. But why is it in the form of a decimal? And what's the point of the number five if it never changes? Well, before the Yosemite Decimal System and the popularity of climbing, the only mainstream standardized gauge for outdoor terrain difficulty was the Sierra Club classification system, and you'll still see it used today for mountaineering purposes. It breaks up the difficulty to travel across terrain into five categories or classifications. Class one is a stable hike. Class two is cross country travel. Class three is scrambling. Class four is obvious but non-technical climbing. And then there's class five, which is technical climbing that requires additional equipment and training. This simple system of terrain classification was satisfactory when people weren't pushing the limits of the vertical terrain and just required a basic idea of what to expect on their mountain outings. But as rock climbers innovated and became more bold, an easy class five became very different from a hard one. So the need to further subcategorize class five terrain arose. Now in 1952, the answer to this problem was provided. To further break down the difficulty of class five terrain, a decimal number from 0 0.0 to 0 0.9 were added behind the original simple classification number of five. So you had 5.0, 5.1, 5 5.2, and so on, all the way up to 5.9. Then 10 different established climbs were ordered in perceived difficulty and assigned a corresponding decimal number, starting with 5.0 as the easiest and 5.9 as the hardest. And so the Yosemite Decimal System was born. All current and future rock climbs could now be compared to these difficulties and be provided a relative rating. This was a monumental step for climbing. Now a climber could choose the appropriate level of climb and easily communicate the difficulty to others in a standardized way. Imagine if the only reference you had when going to tackle a new climb was that it's class five, along with some arbitrary description of difficulty from someone trying to inflate their personal strength. So this was a much needed innovation. And as the ceiling of the sport has continued to rise, we've added more numbers to accommodate these new benchmarks and maybe boost a few egos along the way. And as I said, the original system topped out at 5.9. We've now added decimal numbers all the way up to 5.15. But it's not like every person who has rated a climb has paid homage to these original 10 Californian climbs, right? So how do we decide what a route should be rated today? Well, when a new route is provided a rating, it becomes a standard measurement that others can use to rate future routes. So over the past 70 years, a vast network of relative rated climbs has spread across the United States, kind of like a giant game of telephone. But we all know what happens in the game of telephone. This is one reason you may experience seemingly very different difficulties for the same rating depending on where you are. So when a modern climber establishes a new route, 
they state what they believe its rating is based on personal experience with other climbs. Then they'll often have other climbers try it out and they all come to a consensus on the final rating. This eliminates some of that natural distortion. But since we're human, ego, bias, and lack of experience all play a role in this massive ongoing game of telephone. So although some people don't want to admit it, there can be wild inconsistencies. But this doesn't mean the Yosemite Decimal System is bad or useless. When it comes to rating the difficulty of something like climbing, which has a seemingly infinite number of possibilities and variables, this feel it out system is honestly the best thing we got. It at least gives people a ballpark of what to expect from a climb so they can choose and plan accordingly. And it gives us something to strive for and talk about after a challenging day at the crag. Now there will always be a debate on the difference in ratings, but until we're all clones with the same experiences and body builds, our perception of this subjective sport will always differ. And when you climb something that feels way harder, just remember, you may be overlooking a hold, having an off day, but it may also have been rated with a different standard than what you're used to. Without the Yosemite Decimal System, how could we cheer on the best in our sport as they push for the next level? How could we gauge our progress or choose what to do next? It changed climbing from the Wild West to a measurable sport, which is a big contributor to its modern appeal. So we should always be grateful to those original climbing pioneers of the Sierra Club for inventing this invaluable tool. And that's the Yosemite Decimal System. Stay safe out there. Uh.